Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thank you so much for joining me today. What we're going to do today is another little folder using a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. This time we're just using a plain sheet, but you can do it with some of your scrapbook paper. I am using a plain, as I said, but then I'm going to use a 12 by 12 double-sided pattern sheet to actually decorate it. This is our little book. Now, I made one of these years ago that I used for photos, but it was a larger size. And I came across it the other day and went, oh, this would work beautifully in one of my journals. So for me, I've left the back plane because I want to actually adhere it into a journal. Um, now, let's have a look at my current journal. So this is my current journal that I'm working on and have been working on for a while now. So they're my pages. This one's slightly smaller than normal, but it would still fit if it was actually adhered on. Now, of course, you could put it in the middle, you could put it up the top, you could put it wherever you like. I've still got my clips in here. If you wanted to, it could also be a tuck. So at the front of your journal, if you've got a pocket, you could tuck it in there as well. Just watch your tabs that you have hanging out the side. And it's up to you whether you have tabs out the side or not. I'll put that one back in there without killing all my book paper. So what this one is, is, so it's just folded over and I'm hoping you're fully in shot and I'll move it up and down as we go. So going back, we have a tag here with a journaling spot. So he just goes back in like so. I've got tag here. This one's just a pretty. Now you can put tags on this and pockets and all the rest, or you can just do pretties. But I've got another tag here. Now these flower pictures, if I can undo him, these ones are just printables from Graphic Fairy. They came in a sheet oh, with six or so, I think. I don't know if I've still got him sitting out. No, he might be put away. I'll see what I can find during it. Um, these little ones are from Tim Holtz, Field Notes. This is just a book page. This is just some grid paper that I've tea stained. And oh, a couple of weeks ago, I went and, because I love my stamps. You know I love stamps and I'm always using stamps and I love my number stamps and just little words and all the rest. I have a few old business stamps and of course I've got a few of the Timmy ones that I quite often use. Came across the company, uh, now they're an Australian company, I think. Fairly certain she's an Australian company. But she has this stamp set. They are just clear stamps. You can see I've been using them. Had to, which is another reason why this project came about. Because I just had to use these stamps. And it's got the most wonderful numbers, autographs, little postal stamps, addresses. And it, it's just brilliant. They weren't expensive. I can't for the life of me think now what they what price they were, but they weren't expensive. Now, this is an Australian company, um, so my prices, of course, were in Australia. So you'll need, and as far as I can remember, she does free shipping over $80. Again, don't quote me. Please go and look her up, which is witchcraftdoyoudo.com. She has a plethora of all sorts of things. But these, and she has stencils, oh, and she has stencils as well, which I just love. So stamps and stencils, oh, seventh heaven. Right, so that's where all these number ones come from. Uh, the oh, That's part of one of her stencils at the back of that. And the wording stamp on that, the script stamp is that one, which is a darkroom door stamp she does rubber stamps that's an australian company as well so 
dark room door. Flicking him back over, I'll bring him down. Another little pocket, another little tag. Again, the witchcraft do you do, stamps and the field note florals, ready to do journaling on. Just tucks in there. We've got two little tabs here, something to write on if you want. These are some of the autograph stamps from witchcraft do you do. And then I've got tags in here. Oh, that was one of the stencils. Um, and I think that script stamp was a Kaiser Craft stamp. They just go straight back in there, if I can get them back in. Oh, yes, no, no, yes. No, my, oh, yes, there you go. Right, so they just go in there so I can see my wording. This one is the same, exactly the same on that side, different stamp on that side. So lots of stamping I've put in this, but it's up to you. You don't need to stamp. You can just add all your pretties and your embellishments if you like. So if we flick those over, got more writing here. I have another little pocket in here. Again, witchcraft do you do? Witchcraft do you do? Same here. And a field notes floral ready for journaling on this side. Then this one folds down. I've just got a centre space in here just to bring a focal point. It's up to you what you want to do with that. And then down here, I've got another little pocket with a Kaiser Craft stamp and just a little postcard tucked in. So, in essence, this is our little file, book, folder, whatever you want to call it. So just up, over over, down, and across. Now, as I said, I didn't decorate the back. I've left that because I plan to have it stuck into my journal. If you want to, you can decorate the back as well and use it as an actual tab pocket type thing to pull out. So, um, and this is just one of the book page flowers that I made on a tutorial a couple of weeks ago. Very easy to do the actual book itself. It's the decorating that takes some time. So for this, I'll do some of the decorating, but not all of it. You'll get the gist with this one. But what I want to show you is how to actually cut and fold and make your actual book. So I'll pop those stamps away. Just move my book to the side. What you will need is to make some space. Right, what you'll need is a scoreboard, if you've got a scoreboard. If you don't have a scoreboard, don't fret. Use your bone folder and a ruler and mark and measure at the right spaces. Now, it's just a piece of basil cardstock or any cardstock will do. It's not overly thick. The one that I did originally was, again, a piece of basil, but it was basil bling. So you can see that that's the other side of it. I actually like the back side of this colour more than this side. But it's a little bit thicker weight than their normal one. So you can see where it's slightly torn where I've been playing with it during the week. So I've gone for a slightly thinner one this time and hoping that that'll make all the difference. So just sit it in your scoreboard if you've got a scoreboard. Otherwise, measure and mark. So 12 inches, we want to make it into three panels. So which means we're looking at four inches and eight inches. If you're measuring and marking, so measure across four inches and mark top and bottom, put your ruler down and score down that way. Back over to eight inches. Can you see that? If I move it down like that, maybe you can, just to prove that I'm doing it at eight inches. So eight inches and all the way down. Turn him around so that your score lines are going landscape way now, left to right. And again, four inches down and then at eight. 
So what you now have is a grid of three, six, nine squares. I'm just going to move this one. Now, we want to cut out these squares. So we want our four squares in here taken out. Now you can put them on your trimmer and take them down to this. So if I bring that up, you can see the scored lines, hopefully. We're going to this point and taking out this section. We're taking out this section, this section, and this section. Or you can just be lazy like me and use your scissors. So when I do it, I'll just explain this, your score line is usually quite fat. Your trimming, when you're using scissors or trimmer, it's a really thin, fine line. So when I cut it, I will cut to the inside of that fold so that I'm not actually cutting directly on the middle of that fold. I'm just cutting to the inside line of that fold. I may still need to trim a little bit more down because I'm not the straightest when it comes to scissors. But it's easier to lift it up to the camera when I'm using scissors. So straight down, turning them around and do that with all four sides. Um, I'm trying to concentrate, which is why I'm a bit fuzzed with my words. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to go straight. Scissors and me don't go straight. Um, I love my scissors for fussy cutting, but let's face it, that's not overly straight. But for straight lines, I just cannot seem to achieve it. Most times I would use my ruler and my craft knife. So, but I can't guarantee that everybody else has a ruler and craft knife. So I just want to prove that you can do this with scissors. All right, last cut. All right. So now what we're going to do is fold each of these in. Now, if I fold it in the way that it's going to become the book, I can see where I need to still trim a little bit off. So I start with my bottom flap. I'll go up, straighten it a little bit if I need to as I go, and score down. This one's going to go over. He's quite a bit off. That's all right. There's lots of ways to fix it as we go. So top one. Uh, I usually helps if your 12 by 12 paper to start with is perfectly straight. And sometimes they're not. It's just the nature of the beast. Right. So, dun, 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 dun. Up, that way, that way, and that way. So you can see already that it's slightly out of whack because this guy is slightly longer. So we're going to take a little bit off him. And I'm going to try and do it with... No, I'm not going to do it with scissors. I'm just going to sit in my trimmer because I'm just going to end up everywhere. Right. So I just want to take a little bit off for now. So we've got up. Now he's starting to fit in there. That one's going to go down. That one's going to go across. So just that one cut has made that so much better sitting in. But I'm just gonna, while I'm there, trim just a sliver off each of those so that they sit in. That's sitting beautiful. And yes, that's a lot thinner than the green one that I did to start with. Now, if you want, if you wanna take it that one step further, when you're scoring, Score a double line so that you've actually given yourself a spine or a flat section in each of those and it'll make it, allow it to be thicker. You can then put more in it and it'll come out further like a book. Now, with my original one, I've got two tabs sitting in here. 
when I've done, chuck that rubbish down there. When I've done these two tabs, what I've actually done is taken a piece out. If you don't want to go that far, you don't have to. You can just slice straight down and make two tabs. For me, I liked the real separate identity of them. So, which is this one? I will go for my blade, though, with this one. If I sit him down and I measure, put my little ruler on, going in inches, the four mark so two and I'm gonna just take it mm, 16th either side so it's full eighth of an inch now but I've taken it so there's your two inch mark and I've gone 1 16th over that way 1 16th over that way which gives me my section to cut out so down here go on my four so two 1 16th one sixteenth that way, which then means that when I take this out, just going to run it up to the fold line and down, swing him around because I'm a right-hander, onto my pencil mark and down and down to that score line. And then I can just take this out maybe there we go so now I actually have two individual tabs over 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 down and that's it so easy so to decorate this and we've got our four that we cut out originally so what I've done with this one is then made my pockets. So you can see that's there. So with these, I can stick them on. These will be a little bit longer and I'll trim them later. So just with my glue now, ah, oh, that's what I had to say. I've had a few questions lately regarding the glue that I use. So just bear with me and I'll reach up Oh, bang, my little white glue. This is the brand that I use. It's an Expressit Power Tack, um, 8.5 ounces or 250 mil. It's um, used on wood, MDF, polystyrene, paper, metal, fabric, most plastic surfaces. I've found that it works a treat for me. This is the bottle that it comes in, and that's the massive big lid on it so it comes out nowhere near as fine as I want it for when I'm doing pockets. What I found is some little bottles and I think these ones were just and it was a good year or two ago I found a two pack in um, and I think it was just one of the cheapy stores like the two dollar shops things like that but I I haven't been able to find them since so I've been tracking them down now the other day I finally found in our local scrapbook store where I am in Victoria in Geelong um, create on almond and she has some that looked awesome because they actually have a little section that you can sit this bit back on and they're by quilled creations so it's the quilling mob and because they want very fine detailed bits and it was just same principle, but it had an extra little bit there that you could stick this onto while you're working. Because otherwise I'm trying to hang on to that bit as I'm going. And that's all I do. I just, when it's running empty, I fill it from that, pop it in there. And then I've got a usable glue to actually work with. So that's my glue. So all I'm going to do now is make this one in to a pocket so all three sides try and stay fairly straight the closer into the center you go 
as in this section, means the smaller your actual tag can be. Right, set that back on there. Nope, yes. Right. Pop this one. Now, you can either have, this is basil, as I said, so it has a texture on one side, flat on the other. I'm going to put it so that it's the flat side up. Pop it in there. I want to leave it so that it's just a little bit shy of the actual fold line so that it doesn't interfere with when I'm folding my book. Now, when I've also glued it down, I've glued it this side and I've watched where I'm going on this side because I don't know if you can see that or not. You can still see my slight crease marks there and there. But so when I've put it on, I can now trim these off. I'd much rather have something that I can then trim off than having it there and then worrying. Sometimes I worry, sometimes I don't, about where I've actually got my pocket and what I might marks I might have on it, etc. So there's one pocket. And just to remember that we've done it, use my it's just this one actually is a three quarter inch from memory. So I can just pop it straight in and punch. Or if you're concerned about where you're punching, again, put it on. So it's a little bit smaller than four inches. So if I take my ruler a little bit over this way, a little bit over that way, I still get my centre mark. Straight in. Line him up so that that centre mark is vaguely in the centre. Oh, because I'm going through two layers. So there's my first pocket. Just like so. So this one. And I've got that one, that one, that one. I want a pocket on this one so that my tag comes out. But what I'm going to do with this one, turn him upside down, because I'm actually adhering it onto the front side. So again, another one of my squares. We'll get stuck down there. This time, this side is becoming my pocket. Does that make sense? So if I turn it back over, this is what we've got. It's the top piece that is becoming our pocket, but it'll be the right-hand side where our pocket actually is. Because that way, when all these are closed, your pocket doesn't get fouled by all your other folds. But because, so for me, I'm actually going on the outside with this one. Again, to stop making too much bulk in here. So, look, I suppose it really makes no difference, does it? Think, Kylie. It'll make no difference. All I'm doing is mucking you up. Back to there. Sorry, girls. Rewind as we were. Pocket there, pocket here. And I'll do it this way just so that we're not getting confused. So our pocket's going to come from our right side. So I want to glue those three sides. As close as you can to the edge. And down here. Okay. And again, I'm trying not to get my folded sections. So I'm going to work on this corner. Uh, once again, a little bit shy of the crease marks. And I'll get my, oh, I meant to change my cloth. I've been spraying inks and used it to clean up the very large mess that I had sitting on my desk the other day. And it's, yeah, hideous. None of the ink's coming off, but it just looks disgusting. Got no glue coming out that side. 
So I'll turn him over and trim those ones off. Right, so now we've got our pocket here. We're going this side, and again, we're going to put just a thumb hole in there. It just makes it easier to grab things, and I find it gives just a little bit of I don't know, eye worthiness. That's not a real word, is it? Oh, that's hard. Um, it just gives something else to look at. So we've got our pocket and our pocket. I wanted to make these ones into pockets as well. Now, with my last one, I actually trimmed them back so that I can still have my tab coming out. So I'm just going to do that. And you can do it on this. You can do it on your trimmer because they're just the flat edge there. That looks straight. I'm just going to take them back. Oh, this board is centimetres. So this is a centimetre. Um, look, I'd take them back if you're working in inches, about half an inch. So let's have a look. It's not quite half an inch. But you could go up to half an inch. So now... You've got this little section here. I'm actually going to take them back just a little bit further. So, yeah, take them back half an inch. And I don't know what the measurement is that I'm now cutting back to. It's just what I think. And it's usually how I do things. Yeah, I'm happier with that, which allows room for your tags to sit out without getting fouled in that. So, to make these ones pockets... Again, we're going to do the same scenario and we'll stick, we'll go this side because it's easier and we'll stick those to there. We'll just do one at a time. Let's see if I can go that way. <laughs> That's cack handed. This one, I really don't want to take up too much paper because they're fairly thin to start with. Now, did you just see my lid of my glue driving itself through there? And that's why, when I saw these Quilled Creations ones the other day, I thought, oh, there they go. Uh, it's a little bit shy of that. Sorry if my hair's in the camera. All right, get rid of that glue. Get rid of that glue. Turn it over and trim that one down as well. So now I've got my separate one for that tag. And it is there. It's very hard to see. Maybe this was not a good colour, sorry, to so that you can all see. Let's do the same with this one. Let's really mark that one because on a smaller tag, you really won't notice. So technically, these will be just under two inches. So again, I'm putting my ruler just a little bit past the two inch and the same on the other side. Makes it so much easier than trying to work out actual measurements. And then I'm working on even numbers. You could use a smaller punch smaller circle but all I've done is just not taken it in as far so with our last one going that way this one will stick in there like that just can't see what I'm doing and down try not to go too close to that fold this line Kylie this time, Kylie, I know what I mean. Right, right up to the end. And 
Stick this one down. Give him a wipe. Lovely. that bit off yes that is very hard to see that was such a silly idea the color looked good at the time and it was could have been one of the first 12 by 12 that i just came across and pulled out so same section and i will clean all this mess in a minute just so i can see where i'm going down to that same thing Just a little bit in this time and hope that they're in the same spot. Look at that. All right, so we've got that, 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 and that. And no, I didn't go in as far with that one, but that's all right because they'll have tabs in it. So pocket on this one. Now it's going to foul up here if I do a full pocket up that way so what I did was I did what I did was I did I did a lower pocket like so but first things first I need to put a little bit up there so I just grabbed some book page um, and I've got book page sitting everywhere do I have any Oh, I got that. Oh, actually, I have some 12 by 12 sheets again. But let's do that, and I'll just use some of that. I just want a little bit, and we're just going to stick it up there so that when we do our pocket, and our pocket finishes down here, We've already got this bit in. Now, I like that January bit, but I think what I want is to have this so that it's centered. So I just use my glue stick for that one. Now, my glue stick that I use, I'll just get a piece of scrap. My glue stick that I use is a Boss Stick brand. And these do, they do two different types in the glue sticks. They just do a glue stick just called glue stick. I buy their blue, B-L-U, blue stick, because then I can see where I'm actually going. And look, they both work exactly the same. And I originally got onto this because it was the ones that the kids used at school. And so I just nicked one of the kids' glue sticks one day and it just, it worked a treat. So I'm just going to go across the top there. And it's round about, round about that width. I don't want to go past where my paper is because then it'll stick my pocket. So there's no rhyme nor reason to how I do it. I just, that's the way I go. So I'll just sit you that way. I want to... Right, if you a push, trim that, and this is where I tend to use my scissors because I've got something to follow. <laughs> trim that one, trim that one. Now, and for me, sorry, I'll ink, but I'll just be quick just so that it gives a little bit of definition. And this is what we've got going on with this one now. So we're gonna use this as a pocket, like so. And it's up to you. If you want to, continue with that or leave it and just have it like so, which is what I'm going to do with this one. So I'm just going to sit him on and he's going to be about 
there. So I want, I want, I want, I want, around about that width. I'll trim that off because it's always easier to trim this from now than trying to trim when it's against the fold. Always remember, if you're, you know, like I could have stuck that on and then pulled that over and trimmed across there. The problem with that is that you run the risk of cutting this fold. So now I've got a straight edge to sit on there and I can glue that on and then I can just trim if I've got any bits here and here. So I want, right, what I'm going to do is put my glue down here and I'm going to put my glue just to this bit going to try and keep it on the cardstock. That's my top. And I'm just going to put a little bit up here to counteract where I may have missed that bit. That's just my uh, fiddly way of doing things, and I'm sure there's a lot better way of doing it, but that's just how I do it. All right, so down again, I want to keep slightly shy of the fold, and this time I've put that pocket on the outside piece so that he makes for that when you actually open it up. Right. No, I'm not going to use my scissors on that. That's just asking for trouble. Truly it is. All right. One. And the other side's beautiful. The other side's also not stuck. That's better. All right. And two. Like that. How easy is that? So all our pockets are done, more or less now. All our pockets that are actually attached to our book. From that, it's just the decorating. We will very quickly do up a little bit of decorating so that you get the gist of what is going on. I will even more quickly tidy up some of this so that I've got some room. I've got a bin down here. You'd think I'd use it. But then if you look in my lap, I've got all my punched out pieces. All right. Mm. And that's too big to throw away. And that I will use. Right. So we're going to decorate. What I want is to use this. It's got some beautiful florals. Makes for some lovely sections. So again, if I cut this into four inch strips and again you might not have a large trimmer you can do this with your ruler you can do it with a knife so i'm just going to measure down four inches which gives us our basic starting point we'll trim it down from there so four inches I'm just using a self-healing cutting mat here. You can rule that and use your scissors, or you can use your knife and your ruler, which is what I'm going to do right here. I tend to use my knife for most things. All right, I'm going to put that one to the side. So I've got a four inch wide strip here, which has both sides. So we'll cut this back to four inches. I'll use my just my little trimmer. I'll cut two of those. All right. 
front cover, which is, which is, that's the base, that's the top. Yep. That one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. <laughs> so, see with this one, I've just trimmed the inside one and left our outside cover full. This one I've given it that one to start with. So, I, but I want to do that so I can show you how to make that little circle because we're not doing all of it. We're just going to do some of it. And I want to show you how to make that circle. I can see that just. That one should give me a piece that's going to fit on there. Let's see how it covers our circle. Watch. So I'm going to make another piece that's then going to just mount on the top of that to give us some focal point. So no measuring. It's just, yeah, I want about that much smaller and about that much smaller. So trim those off. That should now fit that. I want it a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, I want to show a little bit more of the background. Oh, that's because there's my mark. And there's my mark. I don't know what I was looking at. There's my pencil mark and there's my pencil mark. That's what I want, as we were. Right, there's that one. So I'm going to ink just with my walnut stain. Just very quickly. No thought required. And I'm just going to adhere that one to that. So up with my scrap piece and my glue stick. All right. Going that way. Like so. With any luck, that should fit. Does look at that. Right. So what we used before was a one inch circle punch. Okay. If you've got a slightly larger one, no, it wasn't a one inch, it was a three quarter inch. That's a one inch. So the three quarter inch is the one that I use. That's a one inch. So what you can do, set this back on. Watch. Set him on. Make pencil mark that you're probably not going to be able to see where this one is. Using your smaller one again. Go in until you find your pencil marks so that your circle is lined up with your pencil marks. I'll try and do this high so that you can see it. How about I use a pen that's darker and then you'll be able to actually see what I'm talking about. So if I use, there's my pencil mark and there's my pencil mark. Can you see the pencil marks on there now? So we've got, now I've lost them completely. There and there, it really hasn't shown up, has it? Um, what about dark brown? Go over with the dark brown. Nope. It's not going to help at all. Sorry. Smaller one. Popping them in. 
so that you can see your pencil marks or your marks or whatever else punching through. So now I've got one that is the same size as that one. If you want it like that. If you want to go a little bit larger, get your larger punch out now. Sit him in so that you can see just the little bit of gap. And this one takes a bit, this punch, because I don't use it that often. Sorry about the noise. Right, so now what I've got... Is it that one? It's that one. Is that... Does that help? It'll... Look, if you don't have... The next size up in your circle punches by all means where's there a scrap of paper oh look all right repunch it as you want use your pencil and just vaguely go around you don't have to have all the gadgets and that way you too can do the same thing and then just use your scissors it gets harder because you're cutting in a circle and let's face it we all love cutting in circles so I'm, my scissors are just closing and what I'm doing is moving my paper like that if you then ink it it takes your eye away from where it might have been. Um, so now if I do my initial half circle, which I don't know what size it was, I sit that one over it. Okay, so you don't need to have a punch the next size up because you can do it that way. But if you do have one, that's how we can do it. So this will just stick now straight onto that one, like so. And we can stick him on. Now, because it's cardstock and cardstock and all the rest, what I tend to use is a bit of both glues. So I'll put a little bit of glue stick in the center and then I'll use my white glue and go around the edge because I know my white glue is stronger than my glue stick and that way or if you want you could use double-sided tape I will quite often use double-sided tape on the edges instead of the white glue and still use my glue stick in the center part so now I'm going to try and hang on to that without it going everywhere, lining that up, like so. Give him a push, whoops. And there's your front cover. Now, we want a tag in there. So I've already pre-cut some tags, but I haven't cut them to length because I want to work out what length. Now these are just done from a We Are Memories tab punch board. One day we will go through that. I don't use it that often, but some because I find that it's a little bit large and quite often I'll cut off around here. But for something like this, it works a treat. So I want them to sit in there like so which means I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. You've got to remember I've got glue down there anyway, so I'm going to finish it around about there. So that then this one, I haven't opened these at all yet, have I? Just give him a little bit of a curve.
will then sit like that. So let's say we want to decorate our tag. Um, I'll link my edges. We'll do this tag and then we'll go through the other ones in the one that I've done, in the first one, the prototype, and we can um, see how everything else works. But I've given you the basics and how to do your little circle punches. And everything else is just decorating. And it, look, it's the decorating that takes the time because we all tend to sit back and go, mm, and dither and fiddle around and all the rest. It's when you just put your mind to it or get out just this amount of stuff and that's all you can use. It's when you've got everything else sitting around that you go, oh, I could use this. Oh, but then I'll use that. And it just becomes beyond. I'll get rid of that because I don't need that one anymore. So what I want to do, let's put some stencils on. Let's use these lovely stencils again because there's just so many. Um, this was just a stencil pack that she had. So it came with a selection of different stencils. And the main reason I wanted it was for that wonderful case file one. And, of course, the number. But there's some other ones in there. And I love that. That's probably not one I'm going to use. That and that out of those ones I will definitely use. And, of course, the case file and the number. So let's just sit this one on again. And we'll use him just as a background. I will use brushed corduroy and I'll use vintage photo as well. I've just got um, one of the Tim Holtz Distress brushes. So they're like a little makeup brush. You can just use makeup brushes as well. There's lots of different things on the market. And I just use this for my browns. So I've coloured these comers silver and I just use this for my browns. Um, Bear with me. So like, that's the one I use for my blues. But always start with your lighter color. So for me, brush corduroy is lighter than my vintage photo. And I'm just rubbing a little bit on and I'm just going around. I don't have to worry then about my blending tool and the foam on that getting caught in the stencils. And I don't want a perfect image. So I've just gone lightly with that. And now because my brush corduroy was lighter, I'm going to go straight onto my vintage photo, which is not sitting on... I have my um, inks on a non-slip mat at the top of my glass mat so that they don't move and I can just pick them up when I want to. So all I'm doing with this is rubbing a little bit of vintage photo to give some darker areas so that when I lift it up, I've got this variegated image. And I will just wipe that one. Brush corduroy goes there, vintage photo goes there. Put my lid on that one. And I will just then wipe this over. You can go and wash them and all the rest. Um, I tend not to. Unless I'm using texture paste or gesso or something like that and then I will wipe them, wash them properly and I'll run them under cold water and give them a scrub. I want something on that so let's just, I need a little scrap piece of paper, there we go, and I want I've got a tree branch and I've got sepia in my permanent inks. I've got a line through this one to have it straight if I want a straight image when I've got them on a stamping block. For this, I just want little bits, like so. Okay, and then I'll change colours. Sepia is darker than tree branch, so I can change colours without doing my ink pad without doing washing my stamp. And I just want a little bit like that. I just want a little bit up there and maybe a little bit down there, you know, whatever. So from that, 
I can decorate the front of this and I want to put some wording stamps on there. So let's see if I can find, if I can, oh, yeah, I can. They're those graphic fairy images that I was talking about. So we might use this one. And I just tear, a, oh, sorry about that. I just tear around them. Sometimes I will use them as full little journaling cards and adhere them to cardstock. Other times, I quite often just tear around. I'm not going to worry about that little B, I think it is. I just want the flower. I don't want the wording for the description of what it is. Just literally want to go around my flower. Taking off all the straight edges. Give him a little bit of an ink just so that he pops again. So you can see how he just blends onto the background. For me, I like it to pop and I like to show that I've torn it all and maybe that it was deliberate, not that I've just picked it up and ripped it out. So now it'll pick up on there beautifully. So again, back to my glue stick. And I'm not going to use this bit anymore, so we'll use that. So you can see that it comes out nice and blue, so I can see that I've got it on all my edges. Get rid of that before I stick everything down. Like so. Give him a little bit of a push. And, and then of course we'll just pop something in here. Now I want to use my sepia. And I want to use those lovely, lovely number stamps. Because they're just awesome. So we'll find one that fits on there, not quite. The little ones down there. That one, and we'll go that one. 9147. Because 9147 is such a wonderful little number. Uh, I'll grab just a little acrylic block with this time because I actually want a full impression. And just because I can't help myself, I'll put my stamping mat there. So I'll re-ink it because I've thought about it. And they stamp beautifully. And then to clean my stamp, I just wipe it mainly so I don't get so much ink all over my hands. And for me, I then want to pop something down here. Now, I don't have a great deal of room for a signature. And I think I got that one back up the other way. But I haven't used that. So let's use that one. I haven't used that one yet. going to fit on there? Yes, you will. Now, most times when I start a new stamp, I always check it on scrap paper, but I found that I haven't with these because I've just been so keen on using them and I haven't had to. They have stamped beautifully every time. They're a really hard acrylic so they've got lots of texture with them lots of form and they don't squash out a lot of the acrylic stamps are a really soft one and they will squash out so that when you're stamping them instead of getting these beautiful fine lines you get this blur and i know we all sometimes feel like blur but some days we don't want that with our stamps so uh, i've just I'm over the moon with them. There is nothing else for it. I'm just over the moon with them. Right, this one's gonna go in like so. We can put anything we want on the front. How about we quickly do a front? I've got my cluster bases and stuff in here. I should have a small one. Did I have you in a different color? No, you're all been done in. Yeah, I would have preferred you done in. 
Let's use that. Let's just put a little bit of this. Because can't go without actually finishing the front cover, can I? Because that's just rude. Right. I'll just chop a little bit of that out. This is just cheesecloth. It tends to sit in my drawer beside me all the time. something like that I'm thinking yes so and I found the easiest way for this watch double sided tape peel off my backing which will allow me to sit there and pleat up my cheesecloth. This it allows you to peel it back off. And now I can actually use my glue on there to stick it down. But I find that for me, that just works easier. Because I've got my cheesecloth, which is technically a fabric, I'm using my, um, it's a Hilmar brand, 450, quick dry adhesive, but it works on fabrics. So this is what I tend to use as a fabric one when I'm putting on lace and trim and stuff like that. Now I haven't used it today and we'll see if it wants to come out. It may, it may not. It's getting empty and I've been saying for two weeks now I need to go and get a new one and I still haven't. So it's just a clear glue. And it's sticky, tacky type thing like a hot glue gun. Give him a little bit of a push because it's got the cheesecloth, just needs to hold down a little bit longer. Oh, I've got ink everywhere. Right, maybe a button to finish it off. Maybe something. It just needs something on that front still to go, doesn't it? What have I got in the way of... Uh, mm, do I pick up the blacks with it? If I put the black one there, it needs something else again. So, oh, no, definitely not. And I, and I have silvery ones. They're all gold. There's a silvery. Oh, neon. No, nearly out of my, um, I need... Yeah, I need some of those, but I've got very little left, and you're too large. Let's have a look. Nope. Just no. Just no. Look at you, the way we were before, and I want to sit you there. Um, I'd like... I'd like a brown thread. Oh. If you will fit through. You're a bit thicker than I wanted, but let's have a look. Don't even know if you're going to fit through that. <gasps> hmm. No, it's very thick. Now I've got some brown. Um embroidery cotton sitting around somewhere but I don't really know where oh that hasn't worked has it all right you get the gist like a black or a brown and I can't find any 
sitting on my desk at the moment. Um, oh, what about some raffia? I do have some raffia sitting here. That might work at a pinch. Pull you through. I've been this for ages. Open you out again. Oh, I'm all thumbs. Right. I can't see that. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. And that side. It's got to be there somewhere. There it is. And I can manipulate it down. Just like that. Just like that. Uh, once again, I'm going to my Helmar 450 because it's sitting on the cheesecloth as well. And now that I should have had it sitting the other way around. Put a lot. Oh, so stringy. And we'll sit you just there. Give you a hold. Move all this away. Over there. Move that one away. Close that glue. Clean up my mess. Right. There's our front cover done anyway. We go in. We've then got that one done as well, which is our next pocket ready to, ready to decorate. But you can see from that... I close that, close that, and then I promise I'll go. Okay, so you've got your pocket. You can decorate in here. And these are just bits of these. Okay, and you can see that I've done the little bit with the larger circle. So that one in there. I've then got front bit on here. I've then got... Decorated in here as well with a tag. Put you under that one. These are our two little pockets and you can decorate them as much or as little as you like. And they're just straight little tags that are sitting in those ones. And you've got this one. See, and I've put a little finger hole in this one and I haven't with this one. But again, it's just... Then a little tuck spot like that, holding him down, moving him over so you can see. I've just done a general area in there and this one I've just popped another little pocket in. I hope that's given you enough idea of where to go with it and what to do. Do it in your colours, do it in your style, but it's such a quick and easy little book to initially make. It's the decorating that's going to take you the time. Okay, I hope you've all enjoyed that. Thank you so much for being with me for the journey. And until next time, thank you.